The National Institute of Mathematics is the Institute of Mathematics of the Hebrew University, which includes uh, both research and teaching. It was founded in the 1920s, one of the initial uh, institutes of the university, by uh, one of the leading mathematicians of his time, Edmund Landau. Eventually, he went back to Göttingen, but he continued to help us found the institute and uh, recruit the initial faculty members, Frankel and Fekete. I actually got to know Frankel when he uh, came to lecture at MIT and he was one of the greats of the 20th century. He gave a lecture on set theory and after the lecture I went up to him and I said, Professor Frankel, I would like to make Aliyah, I would like to come to Israel. So he said to me, you see I was a first year graduate student, he said to me, how many papers have you published? So I said, none. <laughs> so he said, when you have published 50 papers, five zero, come back to me and we'll discuss the matter. So I came in 56 and he, he accepted me with no papers published still. Israel was known for two areas which developed here. One was Seth here in logic, which Professor Frankel had, had been the uh, originator here in here in Israel, coming from Germany. Professor Arya Dvoretsky was also here, and his field was functional analysis. This university became a center for that. One of the outstanding people in that area was Joram Lindenstrauss. He brought a lot of people here. People would come to visit. Probability theory at that time was not that significant, but it also developed two other areas, ergodic theory, and uh, then there was a group theory, which uh, the Hebrew University Math Department is, is, I think, one of the centers, and has drawn many, many people here. If I would have been on the committee, I wouldn't have awarded myself the Nobel Prize. I took things like revenge, and trust, and friendship, and altruism. I explained why these things are rational, okay? I took these things and I, I made them into mathematical theorems. I came here to Israel basically as someone interested in harmonic analysis and probability theory. My other colleague, who came more or less about the same time to Israel as I did, was Professor Benjamin Weiss, and he has very similar interests. And at that time, uh, it was just kind of flowering of, of what's called ergodic theory. And we began working in, in this area. Now, one of the people in ergodic theory at that time, Conrad Jacobs from Germany, he had written some very important text on ergodic theory, and he has to be invited. He, as he spoke about some result in, in combinatorial theory, I began thinking about it, and I realized that some of the methods that, we, that were developed in ergodic theory actually could relate to, could relate and give a solution to the problem which he, which he mentioned. And so it was after, after some time working on the problem and in, uh, among others working with ben, Benji Weiss. You know, the area that developed has been called ergodic Ramsey theory, which is this combination of ergodic theory and combinatorics deals with, for among other things, uh, properties of uh, large sets in a space. I was a student here at the Hebrew University. I was a student at Furstenberg's and was studying the phenomena of multiple recurrence in ergodic theory and algebraic properties related to it. These methods do not apply to primes. And when I was a postdoc, the Green and Tau paper came out. It was very exciting for me because they seemed to have bypassed the problem of the sparsity of the primes. and we're using, seem to be using ideas from er, er, Furstenberg's ergodic theoretic approach and that allowed me to use all the intuition I gained in my PhD and push it forward to the primes. In 2005, Green and Tao famously proved that the primes contained arbitrarily long arithmetic progressions. In later work with Green and Tao, combined with some earlier work of theirs, we proved the famous conjecture of Hardy and Littlewood regarding asymptotic number of solutions to linear equations and primes of finite complexity. I did all my degrees here at the Hebrew University and it was a great experience. The atmosphere at the department here is really good. The individual members are very, very strong, but as a group we're even stronger. It feels like everybody wants you to succeed. I started to study here in 1970 as a high school student. It was a very wonderful uh, intellectual environment 
uh, for young people and also for old people. When I, when I studied, I started uh, quickly to do some research in, in this area of combinatorics. And I remember spending a lot of time in this very beautiful library, which our institute is very proud of. Uh, I'm quite connected with various applications of mathematics. My plenary lecture at the International Congress of Mathematicians this year concentrate on, on this aspect of trying to bridge mathematics with other areas. There is a very strong connection between mathematics and computer science. As a matter of fact, the area of combinatorics turned out to be very useful as, as a, a one of the main tools to study computers. Another area which is a, where mathematics is involved is a, a, the area of game theory and economics and social science. And we have a center uh, here for the study of rationality, which uh, combine people from many disciplines, mathematics, computer science, economics, philosophy, biology. I want to mention here a slightly less known rigidity result, but very impressive rigidity result, which is the quasi-isometric rigidity. Today, uh, we have over 30 faculty members. We have around 40 master's students, 45 PhD students decided to start an international PhD program. Two, three international PhDs every year join us. And a very big group of undergraduate students. The mathematical community here is very diverse and we have people interested in many different areas of mathematics. We have a lot of activities going on, some more informal seminars which happen on an almost weekly basis, also research seminars, also some more formal events like workshops or even bigger conferences. I had my, my bachelor's degree here, I had a master's degree here, I had my PhD here. I didn't have to compromise anything in the academic level. I just could come here and feel very much at home. I got some prizes, etc. But the one title I sort of feel pride when I say that I have is being the chairperson of this institute because it's really a special institute.